Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today, we're going to talk about the most common malignant primary brain tumor. But first, a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of the screen and subscribe to Adventures in Neuropathology. Also, this video is meant for medical education purposes only. If you or a loved one have a question or a concern, please talk to your doctor. All right, let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about a malignant primary brain tumor. So why, so why do I say it like that? Well, um, actually the most common tumors that occur in the brain are metastases, meaning that they arose somewhere else like the lungs or breast, and then they traveled to the brain. They didn't originate there. So the most common brain tumors to occur in the brain actually originated somewhere else. So what we're talking about today is going to be a tumor that is arising from the brain tissue itself. Okay, so let's get started. So we have a patient who's middle-aged and has this very common presentation. Person um, presents with headache, um, you do an MRI and you find a rim enhancing lesion. Um, the surgeon, uh, depending on patient, um, a variety of different uh, uh, clinical situations might choose to do a biopsy or a resection just depending on the situation. Um, in this particular situation, um, it was felt best to give this patient a um, stereotactic biopsy to obtain uh, tissue to make a diagnosis, okay? So what we have is biopsy tissue that looks like this. Um, and this is a stereotactic biopsy here, and then we also have a few fragments here. And um, so this uh, picture here has quite a bit of information all in this one picture. So let's start off looking in the top left-hand corner here. And what we see is that the brain tissue has, um, at first, it is brain tissue. So we have neurons here, which are characterized by these kind of round, ovoid, egg-shaped nuclei with a prominent nucleolus here. And here's another neuron here. And we can see that there are these irregular irregular, atypical cells kind of elongated here. And then there's also a mitotic figure right here. Um, so if, if this was a situation where um, uh, the entire tissue looked like this, then you might think that it is a diffuse astrocytoma grade 2. This is diffusely infiltrating, okay? So we have these atypical cells that are diffusely infiltrating through brain tissue. But the cells themselves, they, they look pretty uh, bland in this image here. Um, but there are mitotic figures, which you shouldn't really have mitotic figures in normal brain and there's infiltrating irregular cells. So if this was the only picture that we saw, um, and we might think that it's a low-grade, diffusely infiltrating glioma. And glioma refers to uh, a few different things, um, referring to the neuroglia. So neuroglia come in um, three or four major forms, depending on who you speak to. The, the two major ones are going to be oligodendroglial cells, astrocytic cells or astrocytes, um, ependymal cells, and then microglia. So four major ones or, or three ones that we particularly talk about when we're talking about tumors. Um, Oligodendroglial cells, uh, they have very round monomorphous nuclei. This is not an oligodendroglioma. Whereas astrocytic cells, they have these more kind of angulated, pointy looking uh, nuclei. Um, and so these are going to be the, uh, this is going to be an astrocytoma, okay? So if this was the only picture we had, we might think that it's a low grade diffuse astrocytoma. However, that's not the only thing we see. So let's go back to this original image and we'll take a look here. And uh, a closer look up 
uh, a closer look um, up close, we can see that there's um, this pseudo palisading of cells where the, the neoplastic cells are kind of lining up in little palisades, you know, like little soldiers in a line or like a picket fence all in, all up in a line. Okay. So they're, they're, um, what they're doing is there's a central area of hypoxic, um, there's a central area of hypoxia here and the cells are trying to run away from that hypoxia okay so it, it's like uh, people uh, in a crowd running away from something scary um, and in this case that something scary is hypoxia so all the cells are trying to get away from it um, from the central region of hypoxia um, and eventually that hypoxia will become necrosis uh, and we'll see another image of that uh, uh, very shortly. So uh, what we have here is the pseudo palisading and then that hypoxia will eventually become necrotic um, and to point that out, uh, have little pointers here. In addition, there's a thrombus here and I want to point that out because in these particular tumors, a, a researcher by the name of Horbinsky, Craig Horbinsky in uh, 2016 published a paper talking about um, tissue factor and thrombosis and uh, in uh, diffuse gliomas that have um, IDH mutation, you do not tend to see thrombi, intravascular thrombi and diffuse gliomas without the uh, mutation. However, um, in diffuse gliomas, particularly astrocytomas that do not have the beneficial IDH mutation, um, they have these uh, vascular thrombi. So looking at this tissue, I might think that, um, I, I would think that this is a diffuse glioma that um, has this intravascular thrombi. So it's probably an astrocytoma that is IDH wild type. Um, but that's a little advanced. So just here, we're talking about pseudopalisading here. Okay, pseudopalisading is where the cells kind of line up one right after the other, trying to get away from central areas of hypoxia, which will eventually become necrosis. So here's another image where we can see necrosis. It's kind of this grungy pink stuff, and you can see little kind of cell debris uh, within the grungy pink stuff. Um, but again, uh, this uh, the central hypoxia, the, the cells are trying to get away from, from that, that injurious stimuli, i.e. the lack of oxygen and nutrients. Um, and so they are trying to get away. So they um, kind of line up in a little line. And we can see that there's necrosis here. Um, so if we go back to our original image, these kind of angulated cells, we have a diffuse glioma, um, meaning it's either oligodendroglioma or astrocytoma, which are the diffuse gliomas, okay? And it's not an oligo because oligos typically have that fried egg appearance, whereas these cells, they're kind of angulated and kind of irregular, um, and they very much have that astrocytic appearance. So this is a diffuse astrocytoma, okay? So in diffuse, uh, diffusely infiltrating astrocytomas, we wanna know whether it's a grade two, grade three, or grade four. Grade two diffusely infiltrative astrocytomas um, would look very similar to our original image that we saw here, where the cells uh, atypical astrocytes are kind of just diffusely infiltrating through otherwise unremarkable brain tissue. Um, you might see one or two mitoses, but you shouldn't see a whole lot. And that's gonna be the lowest grade diffuse glioma uh, which is a diffuse astrocytoma, that's grade two. A grade three anaplastic astrocytoma, you're gonna see a lot more cellularity, um, many more mitoses, um, but you're not gonna see vascular proliferation or necrosis. And so in this image, we see necrosis, and there that is a uh, qualifying characteristic of glioblastomas, which is the worst diffuse astrocytoma you can have. It's a grade four diffuse astrocytoma. And this is um, glioblastoma, which is uh, very commonly can have a, um, a pseudo palisading necrosis or necrosis where the tumor cells are um, palisading away from central areas of uh, hypoxia. Um, 
The other qualification that uh, that that characterizes a glioblastoma we'll see in just a minute. So we go back to our original uh, stereotactic biopsy fragment, and uh, let's focus in on this region here. Um, so if we uh, look at this region a little bit more closely, we can see that um, in a, a lower power view, this whole area here, this is all vascular proliferation. This is where the endothelial cells of abnormal blood vessels are responding to uh, vasogenic factors that are secreted by the tumor, things like uh, VEGF, um, which stands for vascular endothelial cell growth factor, which it sounds exactly what it is. It's a growth factor for the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels, and it creates this um, um, super proliferation of the blood vessels. So let's look at this a little bit more closely. We're going to focus in on this area right here. And we can see that um, the blood vessels, the endothelial cells, are just piled up on each other here and here. And basically, they pile up on each other so much so that they resemble the glomeruli within kidneys. Okay, so the glomeruli that you see within a normal kidney, you have a tuft of cells. Um, that form the, the, the main body of the glomerulus, um, and it's surrounded by a Bowman's layer, where, where uh, this is very similar looking, but instead of the Bowman's layer, you're talking about the inner um, aspect of the um, uh, lumen of the vessel, and these endothelial cells just kind of bow out into the uh, into the vascular lumen. And if you don't believe that it's um, vascular proliferation, you can see the cells are proliferating because there's mitotic figures within the um, endothelial cells. So if you look around, you can probably see a few mitotic figures um, because the vasculature is proliferating because it's responding to a whole bunch of vascular uh, endothelial growth factors or VEGF and other angiogenic factors secreted by the tumor to um, uh, make abnormal blood vessels that can bring blood with oxygen and nutrients to the rapidly dividing tumor cells. So um, the thing to remember as far as the, the clinical correlate to this is that these blood vessels are not normal. They're, they're very abnormal atypical blood vessels and they don't have the usual um, contrast, they don't have the usual blood brain barrier. So um, if you have a patient and you um, put contrast agent within the blood vessels and those uh, the blood travels up to the brain, that contrast agent can kind of leak out into the um, surrounding tumor and you can get a, a, a pretty nice contrast enhancement, which is very um, telling in this tumor and is highly suggestive that this is going to be a high-grade um, uh, diffuse astrocytoma just by the imaging. Of course, you can't make that diagnosis until you actually get the tumor. So talking more about vascular proliferation, here's blood vessel endothelial cells that have um, mitotic figures in them. So the blood vessels are proliferating. Um, here's some more endothelial cells here, blood vessels, and the endothelial cells are proliferating. There's also mitotic figures within the tumor itself. Um, and this tumor is diffusely infiltrating within the brain tissue. And one of the, the, the two defining characteristics of glioblastoma is that it's a diffusely infiltrative astrocytoma that has ne necrosis and or vascular proliferation. So you have to have one or, or both, but you have to have necrosis and or vascular proliferation in order to make a diagnosis of glioblastoma. Um, so this patient uh, received a diagnosis of glioblastoma because of the extensive amount of necrosis and the extensive amount of intravascular thrombi. It's likely that um, this person does not have the IDH mutation, uh, which is unfortunate because patients that do have the IDH mutation tend to um, do a lot better uh, clinically. All right, so that completes our whirlwind tour of the diagnosis of glioblastoma on microscopic examination. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to Adventures in Neuropathology. 
And please join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology. Thank you.